In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about t-statistics and test between the means of related groups. This is the pretest, post test, and I'm going to use Microsoft Excel. I am going to show you step by step how to create a Excel spreadsheet and how to organize it, how I'd recommend you organize it. I also make the calculations in several different steps instead of one giant calculation and I label these for you and I'll show you step by step the calculations being made. I'm also going to show you how to interpret the results so you know what to do with the numbers. I create a null hypothesis and I assume my pretest and post-test results are the same and what I compare is the mean of the pretest with the mean of the post-test or the average. I think it's useful to draw a little bell curve and I will set up my rejection regions and that's the red areas. If I assume my pretest mean is there in the middle what I want to make sure is my post-test mean is far enough away from the pretest mean to be in the rejection region, so I'm not getting these results by some type of random chance. I do this by making a calculation called a t-statistic. It's a t-score. And what I find is, where is my t-statistic at? Is it in the red area? And if it's in the red area, I reject the null hypothesis. If it's not in the red area, in the white area, I would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Actually, anywhere in that gray area. So I set up a pretest and a post test, and I have scores or some type of results. I take the difference between the post-test and the pretest. I square the differences. I square them. Then I sum up all these values. Microsoft Excel is really nice for this, actually. So I sum each of these. And I, I throw all these values into this uh, equation, which looks more daunting than what it really is. And I'll walk you through it step by step. So let's imagine we have student 1, student 2, student 3, student 4, and student 5, and I have pretest and post-test results. The very first thing I'm going to do in Excel is I'm going to add all this up, get the sums. I'm going to take the differences between the post-test minus the pretest. And then I take these differences and I sum those up as well. And finally, I take the differences, like that 5, I'll take move the 5 over, and I square it. And I do that for all the differences. I square them all, and I sum those as well. Now let me go over to Microsoft Excel. And besides the columns of the, the pretest, post-test, I also have a column here, and those are my preliminary calculations. I make a column for my pretest. That's my blue, it's blue in there. And a one for the post test. I move to the difference column and I hit the equal sign. And I click on the post test value, minus sign. And then I click on the pretest value and hit the enter key. That's five. And I click on that cell and I move my mouse over until I see that plus sign. I click on the plus sign, click and hold down the left mouse button and drag down. There you go. Now I click on the difference squared column and I hit the equal sign. Click on the 5, which is the difference. The little hat, which is above your 6, and 2 for squaring it, and that's 25. Now I click on the plus sign and drag down the formula to all the cells, just like that. Now I'm going to sum each of these column values. So I'm going to do the pretest and sum all its values. Sum the post test sum the differences, and sum the differences squared. So I'll do this, what, four times, I guess. I hit the equal sign, type the word sum, open parentheses, click on zero and drag down, close parentheses, and enter. 
I'll do the same thing for the post test. Right there, okay. Now instead of doing that over and over again, I can drag that equation to the right. I roll my mouse over until I see that plus sign and click the left mouse button and drag to the right, like that. If I click on that 27, I'll see the formula, which is, I just drug over. I want to change my 27 to brown also. So I click on the 6, and I click up the thing that looks like a paint, uh, paintbrush, and that's a formatter, and I click on the 27, and, and it just changes the color. I'll do that for my 36 and 155 as well, so it's all color-coordinated. Now I'm going to calculate the number of observations or participants, and I hit the equal sign and tap the word count. Open parentheses, click on one, drag down, close parentheses, and hit the enter key. And that's five, five participants. I have summed all the values, and now I'm going to put everything into the T equation, or the actual equation. I'm going to calculate A, or the numerator, which is the sum of the differences. So I go over to Excel, I hit the equal key next to the A equal and type the word actually just equal and click on the 27 that's all there is right there now b is the number of observations times the differences squared so i hit the equal sign the 5 times 155 right there and hit enter which equals 775 now i calculate what i call c which is the Squaring the differences, the sum of the differences, which is the 27, so I'd hit equal, click on 27, the little hat, and 2, that's the squaring, which is 729. And now I'm going to calculate D, which is the n minus 1 value. So it's just basically, not basically, it just is the equal sign, 5 minus 1. And enter. There you go. Let me show you where we're at. So 27 is the numerator, and that's what I called A, or the sum of the differences, divided by the square root of a bunch of stuff. The first one, 775, which I call B, which is N times the sum of the differences squared, minus 729, which I call C, which is the sum of the differences squared, I divide this by D, what I call D, which is 4, which is the sample size of the number of participants, minus 1. This is equal to 27 divided by the square root of 11.5, which I'm calling E. So in Excel, I type the equal sign next to the E. Click equal. 775 minus 729. I make sure I put my parentheses before the B there, and another parentheses after that, the close parentheses, divided by, which is a little slash sign, 4, and hit enter, which is equal to 11.5. And now I calculate the square root of 11.5, which is 3.39. I'm calling that F. So I hit the equal sign a little hat, and 0.5 for the square root. Hit enter, and that's 3.39. Then I'm going to take 27 divided by 3.39, and this is going to be equal to 7.96. I hit the equal sign. Click on 27. Divided by... 3.39 and enter 7.96 and now I have all my calculations and if I go back to my formula right here so everything's there what do we do now I'm going to show you how to interpret the results and the back of your stats book you have uh, values and tables and I'm going to put put it in here for you right now some of the values and I'm going to have it at 90% um, 95% and 99% the values and I'm going to show you one tail and two tail test results. Again, 90%, 95%, and 99%.
and I will use degrees of freedom down the side of the table. And here's some common values. And what I'm going to try to figure out is my critical value from these tables. And I'm doing, remember, I'm doing a two tail test. I'm looking for my rejection regions or my critical value. A one tail test, I just, of course, just have one tail and all the area in one side, but I'm doing a two tail test. Now I have n is equal to 5, if you remember. So degrees of freedom is n minus 1 or 4. I'm at 95% confidence. So my critical value becomes 2.776. And I will use that negative 2.776 and positive 2.776. And it should be clear that 7.96 is greater than 2.776. So we reject the null hypothesis. One more thing. Let me tell you something else about this table. As my degrees of freedom get large, or my sample size gets large, or approaches infinity, the values in this table get closer and closer to what you would know as z-scores. In fact, they're the same at very large or infinite number of sample size. The value is exactly the same. I often encourage my students just to use a value of 2. If you're doing a 95% test, a value of 2, because a sample size greater than 20 yields a critical value about two. So there you have it. Share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter. Questions, comments below. Make sure you like us, like the video please. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm always posting new material that'll help you pass your stats.